game week. So, you know, we had a, a good bye last week and, and um, uh, the week off and got some time for guys to heal up and also some time for uh, us to do some extra work. So, um, you know, we're ready to close out our, our home game schedule in Lavelle Edwards Stadium this weekend against Utah Tech. Looking forward to the game. Uh, looking forward to, to meeting up with you know players that we recognize and staff that we recognize, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, also trying to you know get get this this game and this win for our, our outgoing seniors and, and a few others that are going to be honored. And then you know we'll see we'll see how the game goes. But I feel confident in, in our preparation and, and especially coming off of the bye week. Feel good about uh, what, where we're headed now and. and Looking forward to competing again. That, that's that's a goal. And, you know, Utah Tech has a, has a, they're on, on a little bit of a win streak and well coached team. We're familiar with them and familiar with with a lot of their players. And so, uh, I know this is the, the the end of the year for them. We're expecting their best shot. They've been able to do some good things and, and score some good points and and, and uh, they've had some good competition. So, uh, looking forward to our guys being on the field again, competing. But. Um, uh, another week, just get right back at it, and, and uh, thankful that we had the bye. Now that we're over it, time to get back to work. And, and we had some good work last week, but now it's time to get back to work and get back in, in season mode again. We'll start with a question from Darnell. Klein, you said Saturday is senior day. You, you've got some seniors, guys like Matt Criddle or Joe Tiguapo, that their college football journey started even before you came to BYU. So what kind of impact? do those kind of guys have on your program? Yeah, I mean, they're, you know, guys that didn't have to come back and guys that, like Matt Criddle that you mentioned specifically, uh, he you know, just came back for the love of the, of the game, love of, of the, the program, the team, and the university. And, uh, you know, couldn't, I mean, we couldn't be the program that we are without those guys. And key players, um, they're the glue that, that keeps this team together and, and uh, allows our program to keep progressing. So I... Uh, it's always an emotional time when you get towards the, the end of the year, uh, saying goodbye to people. It's, it's difficult, and so we're hoping to, you know, have that, that extend that goodbye by winning this game and and being bowl eligible. That that'd be a a great way to to, I guess, uh, delay the inevitable, which is that the the season will end. But uh, it will end at home, and, and really looking forward for those guys get up, get their opportunities, make plays, and compete. And uh, they know that we love them, and we really appreciate them. From head coach, uh, I can't say enough about their contribution to our program and uh, the blood, sweat, tears, and everything that they've they put into their effort into our program. It's it's, it's why we're able to have the success that we've had. Mention then, Jay. Kalani, after your conversations with players last week that you alluded to with us a week ago. Uh, do you have a clear idea of where everyone stands with whether they are coming back or not next season now? No, that, that's not. There, there's nothing really set. I mean, we, we've had conversations and, uh, you know, want to get our guys in front of people that, that are in the know because I think they're hearing it from from one side. want to give them uh, opportunity to speak to scouts and, and NFL personnel and just get advice from, from, from a lot of different areas and, um, we, we just have a bunch of guys because of COVID. We have a bunch of guys that have their, their degree in the hand and have had it for over a year, you know. And so uh, I think that the, the decision's got to be theirs, and, and we can give them all the information. Um, but uh, you know, I, I will have a more vote motivated player uh, in the program if this is what they they decide to do. If this, they decide to come back, and I think there's a lot of good reasons to come back, but. Uh, this is this is a, a private decision that they're going to make with their family and their loved ones, and all we can do is give them the feedback and the information on our end. Colin, well, you have the guys that are for sure leaving. Uh, you know, like we've mentioned, a few of them, Lopini and Joe Tukuafu, and some of those. What is kind of the legacy they leave? What what? How would you describe this this class that's departing? Well, they won a lot of games, and they've also been through some adversity, so. Uh, you know, they, they, they're the ones that help us, uh, help pull us out of adversity, and they're the ones that have, um, you know, won a lot of games and, and been, been involved in, in um, establishing the culture of the program. And so I, I'm really thankful to them and 
um, they'll always be part of our program, and we we always want our alumni back here, and um, you know, just take advantage of this. The, the I think you get to this point now in the season where you um, you're gonna miss the the grind, the practice, the it's cold outside, you know, and and um, it's just I think those guys, especially the 13 uh, seniors that are, are done with their eligibility, um, I, I think they're just gonna be able to. Just focus on on what 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 they have and what they've accomplished. I, I think they should be really proud of the things that they've done since they first stepped foot in, on campus, and uh, be proud of the things that they're the legacy that they're leaving behind. Kevin and Jake. Hey Kalani, I was just wondering if Jaron Hall or Puka Nakua will be honored this week, um, and if you could, sp- and if they are, if you could speak to what their legacy is as well. Um, th- there's a. So there's 13 guys that are, that are definitely being honored, and then there's another, I want to say another maybe 15 to 20 that um, that were that can be honored, but have another year left to play. Um, and, and I think the, they're still making their decision if they want to do that or not. And I think the safe bet for me is just to honor everybody, and then um, and then they don't have to make a decision this week, you know. So um, and there's going to be guys that are just probably going to have the benefit of getting two senior days, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I think that way we don't have to have a decision this week, and we didn't have to have a decision last week. Uh, they can take their time in making that making that decision. And, and in terms of, of legacy, that all those guys should be proud of what they've done here. And it's not just stuff on the field. It's, it's things that they've done off the field as leaders and as teammates. Kalani, next year you will play this quote-unquote money game in the early part of the season. Uh, coming off a of bye week and then having a game against Utah Tech, would you prefer to have had this earlier on in the year? Do you care? Well, I, I mean, the, the schedule is whatever schedule shows up, and I appreciate it. I say that I appreciate all, all the work that goes into getting our schedule during the independent stage of, of, of the program. Um, most teams have the – the FCS game early in the year, um, and then they have their bye a few weeks later um, in the in the middle of their conference uh, the conference play. Uh, we haven't had that in a long time, and that's that's okay. I mean, that's just what it is. And so, when next year when we, we go back to what everybody else is doing, I think it would just be a different type of schedule. This this year was similar to last year, ten weeks in a row, and then you. You have a buy, and then you come back and you play play this game. So I, I, all I care about is we have 12 games that are on the schedule. I want our guys to be ready for all 12, regardless who the opponent is, and make sure that we can play out our best 12 times to earn it to earn an extra game. And that's what we're trying to get done. And, and it comes down to this game for us. We can be bowl eligible and, and possibly know what bowl we're going to as soon as we we can get this win. Rod and then Mitch. Coach, every level of football, each team has a challenge that it presents. What sticks out with Utah Tech that uh, concerns you or that will be a challenge for you to pay attention to? Well, they're going to be ton, tons of energy from them coming to this game. I mean, this is the end of the year for them. I know they're fired up for this game. I know their coaches. I know a lot of guys on their coaching staff, and, and, and I'm familiar with a lot of people on their roster. So this is a, a game that they've, they've had circled, and, and they're excited to end their year here. Uh, to come up into, you know, Lavelle Edwards Stadium and play in, in, in a big stadium. And uh, I've, I've coached at that level before, so I, I don't think the motivation, there's just not really much to say. The guys will be fired up, excited, and, and we'll get their best shot. I mean, that, that's what we expect. I, I, my job is to make sure that they get our best shot as well. And tons of respect for their coaches, tons of respect for their team. Uh, it's been I've been really impressed watching them on film, really well coached and great athletes. I mean, they have... They can throw the ball around. They can run the ball on defense. They can create some havoc. So, uh, and and and, and uh, you see some really cool things happening on the field with uh, watching all their film. I mean, we had a bye week, so you have time to watch tons of film on them. And uh, you know, Coach Peterson's done a great job getting his team ready. And I know they'll be they'll be ready for this game. So that's that that's the that's the incentive for them. But we have incentive for us to play this game too. And that's uh, for our seniors and our outgoing players. And then. You know the, the fact that we can get this win and, and, and be bowl eligible. That that's uh, that that's the focus. A lot a lot for us to play for this weekend as well. Along those same lines, Kalani, do you, do you kind of get uh, 
concern that you noted earlier that uh, you want to get the players back in the regular season mode. Uh, any concern maybe from a, uh, the, uh, the offensive challenges that Utah Tech poses? They got some skill players in Obert and Conley who seem, uh, seem pretty explosive. Yeah, and anytime you have, I mean, he has 79 receptions and, um, and you know, they throw the ball around quite a bit. And, and, and uh, you know, Stutzman's the offensive coordinator and um, Paul does a great job with the offense too. So uh, you can see that the, the system that they have in place, I mean, it's like clockwork. They, they can put up points, and, but they put up yards on everybody. And so uh, it, it poses a, a challenge for us and I'm excited for it, man. Our, our players should be really excited about it. Um, but we had, the film doesn't lie. We see it on film. They're a dangerous team, and uh, you know we, we've had some extra time to, to get ready for this. And um, you know we're expecting our guys to be fresh today. We're gonna. The, the easy thing is for us is that we can gauge how ready we are by just getting to work. So we'll practice this week, starting today, and and, and um, you know maybe get get a little physical if we have to this week. Jake, go ahead. Yeah, Kalani, you mentioned the fact that you guys may know soon after you turn you get to bowl eligibility where you might be playing. Has ESPN or anybody given you an idea of what games are in play for you? No, I, I have no idea about that. I just want to get the, the win and, and figure it out from there. But um, I'm assuming that they, they have an idea of where they want us to play. I, I just I, I want to take advantage of the extra time and the extra practices. So. It's important that we, we get the sixth win and, and, and become bowl eligible. Rod, go ahead. Coach, with the level that you guys are at and an FCS team coming into town, have you had to spend much time in telling your players to not overlook this team and not take this game lightly just because they're in a lower division? No, I mean, we, we have guys that, that understand the game of football and you watch um, you know, teams play at the FCS level uh, it's not. It's not. Um, you know, it's not uncommon to see an FCS team beat a, a, an FBS level team, and so we've seen it even on film when we got ready for Utah State, what Weber State did to them. So that that happens quite often throughout, um, and, and even the close games. So uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem for us. We we just have to keep working and play, and then not worry about um, what's what everybody else expects. I expect our guys to play their best. On Saturday, and that—that's—that's that's, that's the focus. We'll take the last question for Minich. Yeah, easy question for you, Kalani. Uh, what did you do over the weekend? I saw that uh, you, with the bye week. What what were you able to to do, and uh, just maybe some of the things that uh, you did over over the weekend with a rare off weekend? Just extra work and and spend some time with family and friends, you know, and that I mean got to. Uh, see my son play basketball and hang out with my my daughters, you know my my older ones and the, and our baby and that's uh, hang out with my wife Timberly and just spend time with them and I think uh, you know just it, it's it's it was a good break but I mean I said we spent time with family and friends but but we watched a lot of football too so that's just that's just that's just who we we are you know my my family and my wife wants to watch as much football as possible we're just that's just the, that's just the business. So <laughs> we're all in it, you know. And so we watched a lot of football, and we watched. I mean, I try to get the kids to help me, you know, watch Utah Tech film and stuff like that. But uh, but then we were able to spend some time together, and and I'm always going to eat. So I, I had to have a a pre Thanksgiving week to prep for next week. <laughs> Did Tyler Algier hook you up with that bed that Tim really was posting about? Oh gosh! Oh, you're getting to that, like you guys. Oh yeah, I I just have to assume now that whenever there's a picture taken, there's going to be a post or something. Um, yeah, I, I love the bed. I, I it was it was great. I mean, I you know I have back problems, and so the bed is actually it's nice. I just you're talking to a guy that didn't grow up with the the finest of beds when I was a uh, a child, you know. So I'm 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 always grateful for whatever we can get and then the technology that's out there this, nowadays. So you guys can get out there. I mean, you spend a lot of your life sleeping, so you might as well make sure it's nice and comfortable. It's a good investment. So much, I didn't know I would end by talking about beds and uh, <laughs> get my own NIL deal, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Lonnie.